Hi guys, welcome back to Origami Twist. Today's video is a beautiful traditional origami medallion. Two ways. You can either turn one six inch square into a medallion and pop it onto a card. Super cute. Or you can make six of them and then glue them all together to create a beautiful three-dimensional piece which you could hang up from the ceiling or any number of things. All right, if you'd like to know how to make the medallion, stay tuned. This model starts really easily. You're just going to make a whole bunch of creases. So we're going to start with corner to corner and crease. And then open the uh, fold and do the opposite corner to corner and crease. So at this stage, and then open. So at this stage you've got an X in your paper. You're now going to take each corner and fold it into the middle and crease. Each time opening the fold again. So just like that and turn and fold and crease and turn and so on until you've done all four corners into the middle and crease. Now you'll know that it is the exact uh, place to crease. If this crease that you created with the original X lines up with the rest of the line. So you fold in and you get one nice line and you'll know that that is the correct angle. And unfold. Now we're going to fold your model like a book. And open and then fold each side into the middle at that crease that you just made. And make sure they're accurate and that you're not folding over because it won't it won't fold up correctly if you don't. So open it up again and now fold the opposite way like a book. and fold into the center. And leave closed. Now I'm just going to open it quickly so that you can see all of the crease lines that we've created. Sorry about the shadows guys, I'm working on my lighting here with the new camera. And I quite haven't quite perfected it, <laughs> but you can see all of the different creases on there. Each one of those creases has a very important uh, position in this model, so you definitely want to make sure you get all of them in there. Okay, so that last fold in, you're going to leave like this. And now we're going to do something besides just fold, crease, and unfold. You're going to look at the point right here there's actually a crease across here where it sort of breaks the model into two squares. We're actually going to do something to the top square and then we're going to do something to the bottom square. And so looking at the top square, you'll also notice that you've got a crease here and a crease here. If you tuck your finger underneath this flap here, and fold just along that crease that you've already made, just like so, and then take your other finger and stick it into the other side, and again, it's that same crease, only mirror image, and open that up. All you have to do is stick your fingers into the middle there and slide across and as you do that, you'll notice that the other, that other crease that was created up here is going to collapse automatically, and then you just press down. Now it looks a little bit like a mushroom or a house with a flat top, something like that, and that's correct. Now you're going to turn 180 degrees. And notice I'm not flipping it over, I'm just turning it. You're going to do the same thing with this other square. So here's some good practice. There's that crease here. 
and slide your finger under the flap and press along that crease and do the same on the other side. Slide your finger under the flap and press along that crease. So insert your fingers into the middle here and slide your fingers across and you'll find that the model collapses on itself. And there you go. Now the next part, you're actually going to do four squash folds. We'll start with the upper left hand side. You're not doing anything to the model except leaving it on the table at this stage. You're going to pick up this little triangle on the le upper left hand side and actually pick it up. And you'll find that it, it creates almost a little, like a shark fin sticking up like this, see? And from the other side. And when you pick it up, my finger's in the middle of the model and that gap is actually facing the middle of the model. I'm going to insert my finger into there, pressing down on the point where these two meet, these two edges here, and hold it down. And then you'll notice that there is this piece on top that, and then you'll notice there's a piece on top. You're going to take your other hand and press down on that piece. And if you follow the previous crease marks, you'll be able to squish it down. Now, don't get frustrated. You can always pause the video and go back and watch a section again if you need to. And I am going to do this three more times so you'll get to see it again. On the upper right hand side, so this squash fold's done, now we're going to go to the upper right hand side and do the same thing. Pick up that triangle so that it is like a shark fin. Sticking up off the paper. Put your finger in the middle and then insert your finger into that gap, pressing down with your other hand and lining it up and then turn it into a square. Once again, you've already got creases there that are pre-made, so it should flatten pretty well. Now turn 180 degrees, so now you have this trapezoid or yeah, I guess that's a, is that a trapezoid? You have this shape at the top and you're going to again, once again pick up that triangle, well we'll start with the upper left like we did before, pick up that triangle, make a shark fin, put your finger in the center of the model, insert into that gap and press down with the other hand. So we've done three squash folds and we have one more coming. Now if you're not sure what a squash fold is, I do have a beginner course that I teach on a, a website called Curious.com. It's only $9.99 and I teach all about squash folds and petal folds and valley folds and mountain folds and all those interesting origami things. So please check that out. Uh, the link will be in the description box below. If you are brand new and beginner and if you are brand new at origami. All right, so once for the last time, we're going to pick up that triangle. So it's like a shark fin, insert your finger or put your finger on the center, insert your finger into the gap and with the other hand, press down. We're almost there guys. We're about to turn this model into this. Now you'll notice that all the way around, you've got flaps coming up off of the top of your model. And you should have the same sort of flaps four times. So one, two, three, four. For each one of those flaps, you are going to fold the edge, the open edge, into that middle diagonal crease. So I'll bring this right up close to the camera. This edge here is going to line up with this middle crease. And I'll do that. Bring it into the center, being careful not to overlap the crease. If anything, just be shy, just shy of it. And crease really well. And then on the other side, we're going to take that edge, bring it into the center, and once again, crease really well. 
So what it looks like is you've got a little kite on top of a square. Now for each one of these flaps, you're going to pick it up like a shark fin, just like we did before, so it's standing straight up. You're going to put your finger on the middle, just like we did before. And the gap here might be a little trickier because it's not square, but it's the same idea. Insert your finger into the gap, pressing down with the other hand, lining up the crease that's on top. Lining up the crease that's on top with that center crease. And do the same on the other side. Now you're going to repeat that for each one of these around and we're almost done. So by this stage you've done this several times either with a square or with a kite shape. So it should become familiar by now. As I said, you can always pause and go back. There's nothing wrong with that. That's part of the reason I love YouTube. And uh, Curious is even, even nicer as far as that sort of teaching skill is concerned because you can, or that as far as uh, going back and playing it again because each section's actually broken up um, in into playable sections so you don't have to go back and find the beginning of the section or anything like that you just click play again and it'll play so that's that course that I was talking about alright and one last time now if you're going to be turning this into a kusudama you want each of these corner triangles to be folded back so that you're actually folding along the point where this point and this point would connect just along there there you go and fold back and fold back again and do the same for all four corners keeping in mind that If you want to put it on a card, don't worry about folding them back, just snip them off because it'll make the back of the, see how I've cut it, there's in, cut into it there, I've just snipped off the corners. That way it's not extra bulk on the back, you can just glue it down to your card. You'll also find that these pop out a little bit and if you're putting it on a card, same kind of thing, just go ahead and um, sticky tape, them, double stick sided tape them down to make them as flat as you like, flat or as three-dimensional as you like. Okay, at this stage, if you've cut off the corners and taped everything down, you're ready to make your card. You just put it onto a front of a card. And if you are hoping to make the kusudama, you're just going to make five more of these exactly like this and meet me back here to connect them.